Okay, um, so exponential decay, one of the big differences here is that you have a negative power because your K tends to be negative. So they're still going off with K being a positive amount, so they have to throw a negative in there. Um, something else to look at, so there's our formula, Y equals Y not E to the negative KT. Um, other books may just say, say that it's still, still the same formula, but K is negative instead of positive. So this is assuming K is positive, so you have given the negative power. Now, um, one thing to talk about with cooling, and this is something you've all experienced one way or the other. I wanna go off this formula right here. So have you ever taken a, a cold soda out of the refrigerator and put it in a room? What happens to that cold soda? It's warmer. Have you ever taken a hot cup of coffee, and that's the example we're gonna do, a hot cup of coffee and take it out and put it in a, a regular room at 70 degrees, what's gonna happen? It's gonna cool down, right? Okay, so this is Newton's law of cooling. And this does follow the logistics growth model. In fact, this formula can very much simulate it. So uh, in the case we're gonna see, the coffee comes down to this temperature and if you wait, it'll go down to the room temperature of 70 degrees, bless you. Um, and so there might be a window in here that's ideal for serving it, a certain temperature to serve it at. Now, I wouldn't be able to tell you that because I don't drink coffee, but bless you. And even with tea, I don't like super hot stuff. It just burns my mouth and you can't taste anything. So uh, Newton's law of cooling. Um, the formula is the temperature at any given time is the initial temperature of it coming out of whatever environment it's in. If it's being coffee being poured out or a soda coming out of the refrigerator, um, minus the ambient temperature of the room, whatever the temperature is here, probably feels like 68 degrees or so in here. What do you think? Whatever. Uh, e to the negative KT plus the ambient temperature. So the idea is that this over time, this expression here is working its way down to this uh, ambient temperature. Now, the, you could probably argue with me if you want and say, oh, well, so you never actually add the ambient temperature, which is a fun argument to make. But because if T goes to infinity, it'd still be slightly. Okay, we're not gonna be at infinity time. So according to the experienced baristas, and any baristas in here? Really? Did you work now on coffee? Okay. So is this true then? Is the ideal temperature to serve coffee between 155 and 175 degrees? According to Strauss boss, yeah. Is that there? Really? Okay. So, and you said, did you raise your hand too? I thought I saw second hand. Okay. Uh, so suppose coffee is poured at a temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And after two minutes in, in a 70 degree room, it has cooled 180 degrees. When is the coffee first cool enough to serve? And when is the coffee too cold to serve? What would you guys do if it got too cold? Would you report? I mean, it's, once you make it, it's up to the customers to drink it. Okay. <laughs> what about, I've heard of cases where sometimes people will just come up and grab someone else's drink and walk off with it. Yeah, and then you just, Make it again. Okay. Or people come up and say that it's too cold, so you just make it again. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to use the formula T equals T sub zero minus T A for ambient temperature, E to the negative KT plus T sub A. And we need to come up with, with our K value first, and then we can calculate the other parts. So this is a two step process. So we know a lot of information here. In fact, we know that after two minutes is our time. We know the temperature of the coffee. We know the room and we know the starting temperature of the coffee. So we can put all these things together and come up with what, um, what our formula would be. So at two minutes, the coffee is 180 degrees. And that's going to be T sub zero. That's the temperature of the coffee was initially at 200 degrees minus the coffee, uh, the room temperature at 70 degrees. E to the negative K times two, because it's two minutes, plus the 70 degrees. 
which is the ambient temperature of the room. So what we don't know here is K. That's the only unknown, but we have the tools to find K. Couple things, we can subtract the 70 from both sides. You have to tell me if you work between now and Monday, if you come on Monday, if you think about this when you're at work again. Okay. 110 equals 200 minus 70 is 130 e to the negative 2k. So a lot of this, I think you know the skills already. What are we going to do next to get the, we're trying to get the k out of there, but we have to get rid of this 130. How do we do that? Divide by 130. And then what do we have? Um, 110 over 130 equals e to the negative 2k. What do we do to bring that k to 2k down? Good. Natural log of 110. Can I just say 11 over 13? Is that going to push people too much? So 11 over 13 equals negative 2k. And now what? Divide by negative two. So K equals the natural log of 11 over 13 over negative two. Okay, so let's put this back together as a formula. T is the temperature we're after, the target temperature, or the temp what temperature after a certain time. And the T sub zero minus T sub A, that was 200 minus 70, so that was 130. E to the negative K, now notice K is a negative number. So the double negative, wouldn't that cancel? So a negative natural log of 11 over 13 divided by two times T plus 70. T is a power, part of the power. So I could have those double negatives cancel. Okay, so we wanna know how long it takes to be 175 degrees. That was the that was the warmest it can be. So I'm trying to solve for T. Little T. What am I going to do? Good, subtract the 70. I have 105 equals 130 e to the natural log of 11 over 13 t over 2 t. And I'm going to be honest, I, I'm trying to follow what the book did here. They left it with that power. I would have probably gotten the decimal. I know it propagates error when you do that, but I think we're looking at close enough time anyway. Okay, uh, but I'll keep it even like here. And now what are we going to do? Divide by 130. And I have 105 over 130. I reduced that to be 21 over 26. Equals E to the 11 natural log of 11 over 13 over 2 times T. And now what are we going to do? Take the natural log. <coughs> so 
Okay. <laughs> so it's natural log of 21 over 26 equals natural log of 11 over 13 divided by 2 times t. So how do we get the t? Oops. Divide by the natural log of 11 over 13 over 2. So t equals, I'm going to bring the 2 up, 2 times the natural log of 21 over 26 over natural log of 11 over 13. Let's see what we get for an answer here. I get 2.56 minutes. So it's the customer has to wait almost three minutes, no, two, over two and a half minutes to get their coffee cool enough. Should we see how long it takes before it's too cold? Okay, that one, we're looking at the same process, but we want to know it's 170, 155 instead of 175. So 155 equals the 130 times E to the natural log of 11 over 13 over two times T plus 70. Okay, what are we gonna do? Subtract the 70. So 85 equals 130 e to the natural log of 11 over 13. There's so much to this over t uh, over 2 times t. And now what? Divide by 130. So what does that reduce out to be? 85 and 130. So that's 17 on top. Thank you. So that's one of the nice things in the 89, which I don't have with me, is it'll reduce fractions for you. That's gonna be equals E to the natural log of 11 over 13 over two times T. And now what? Natural log of, natural log of 17 over 26, good job. Equals the natural log of 11 over 13 over two times T. So what's T? Good. So you divide both sides by a natural log of 11 over 13 over 2. So you said it's going to be t equals 2 times natural log of 17 over 26 over natural log of 11 over 13. Is that what you said? Let's see what t would be. Let me get my handy dandy calculator here. 2 times natural log 17 26 5.09 minutes 
That's a small window. Every one of those things about avocados. Sorry, I can't do that. My avocado is going to be ripe between 8.05 and 8.15. Okay. So we can do the calculation for your place and just measure the ambient temperature. We can change that number and see what kind of range people have. We can tell them okay. this will be ready for you in two to four minutes. And then you'll have three minutes free. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen coffee cups that now will, will keep it hot. They're battery powered. So they yeah. keep it to a temperature you want it to be. Yeah, they're like vacuum services. That's true. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess it matters how much insulation you have on that cup. There's nothing. <laughs> Okay, any questions before we go on? I feel like we've done that one quite a bit. There's another one here that's like it. Um, I just feel like it's, I'm happy to do another problem like this with you, but I don't wanna, I feel like we just did that to death, so. Um, let's look at another concept. What's this one here? An object with initial temperature 140 degrees Fahrenheit is submerged in a large tank of water whose temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Find the formula F of T, the temperature of the object after T minutes, if the cooling constant is K equals 1.6. So remember our formula was T equals the initial temperature minus the ambient temperature e to the negative kt plus the ambient temperature. So what is our, this, this is, instead of t, we'll call it f of t. Uh, the, the initial temperature is what? One, 140, and the ambient temperature is? 70 e to the negative 1.6 times t plus the 70. So what's 140 minus 70? 70. So it's 70 e to the negative 1.6 t plus 70. And that's our formula. Okay, so we talked about doubling time on exponential growth. Now we're gonna talk about decay. We're talking about decay. So anyone know a similar concept to doubling time on the decay side? No. Half-life. So our formula for half-life is very much the same as it was for doubling time, but now we're assuming k is gonna be a negative amount. So it's natural log of two over k. Over k. That's half-life. I make a Mad Max joke, but I'm pretty sure none of you have watched Mad Max. So. <sighs> Not even the new one. Anyone seen uh, Fury Road? No one saw Fury Road, okay, one person. Yeah. Which I'd argue is probably the best movie of 2015. But I, I just can't place it. I feel like it's not in the series of the original three. It's gotta be like a conglomeration because you had elements of really two and three and some of one. But I've heard people make the, try to make the connection. Okay. If the quantity decays exponentially, the half-life is the amount of time it takes the quantity to be reduced by half. And it's given by half-life as natural log of two over K. So uh, what is half-life? Anyone know how to explain it in a nutshell, what half-life is? I'm gonna take chemistry, radioactive elements. So what, what are radioactive elements? What are they doing? Yeah. They're, and they're giving stuff off, right? 
That's the radiation. That's the particles flying off of it. You got different types. You got alpha and beta and gamma type particles uh, that cause different kinds of damage to us. Like alpha is not a big deal at all. Beta wouldn't get through your shirt, I think. And gamma, they go right through you. Whereas the alpha doesn't get through your shirt. Um, so if you have like a radioactive element like uh, carbon-14, uh, it would decay down to, it, it's it's not like that is disappearing, but the amount of radioactive part decays over a certain period of time. So that it becomes, after that period of time, you have half the radioactive material that you had to begin with. And one example here is the radiocarbon dating. Um, and I'm gonna just say for a disclaimer, um, I, the accuracy of carbon dating is not all there. And, it also assumes a constant environmental condition and the environment has changed over time. So just be careful on making a lot of assumptions. And even when I was in school, I took an anthropology class. It was really, really interesting. But they said, yeah, the calculations they're using, they're trying to update them because they're off. And so things that would have been dated out 10,000 years might be a thousand years. And so just be aware that these aren't always super accurate. Okay, one of the most common applications of an exponential decay model it's carbonating carbon-14 decays, emits a radioactive particle at a regular constant, regular and consistent exponential rate, so they say. Therefore, if we know the how much carbon was originally present in an object and how much carbon remains, we can determine the age and object of an object. So what they're saying is there is carbon-12 is the non-radioactive one, carbon-14 is radioactive. And that all things that are alive have an, a certain constant percentage of carbon-14 to carbon-12. But when something dies, the carbon-14 carbon stops being accumulated and it just starts decaying. So then if you have a lower percentage of it, then whatever you can you can estimate, then what it should be in the, the, nat the natural occurrence, then that is um, that gives you an idea of what the age of this object is, if it was organic. You can also do if they have like a, like a they find a shelter where maybe a, uh, population lived, they can find organic material in there and then carbonate those things to get an estimate of the, of the place itself. So, okay. Um, Half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years, meaning that after that many years, half the material is converted from the original carbon-14 to the non-radioactive nitrogen-14. We have 100 grams of carbon-14 today. How much is left in 50 years? Do 100 grams, how much is left in 50 years? And then if an artifact had, that originally had contained 100 grams of carbon now contains 10 grams of carbon, how old is it around the nearest 100 years? Okay, so we know that time equals the natural log of two over K and that 5,730 equals the natural log of two over K. And if we cross multiply, uh, K times 5,730 equals the natural log of two. So K equals the natural log of two over 5,730. So the question we have using the formulas we have for this chapter, this module, this part of the module, y equals the initial amount of 100 e to the negative natural log is negative kt negative natural log of 2 divided by 5730 times t and they asked about it how much of the 100 gram sample remains after 50 years so y would be 100 e to the negative natural log of 2 over 5730 times 50. So all this E stuff, all that is just a power for E. So we can take our calculators, type in 100 times E to the negative natural log of two. Oops, oh no. And then I have, I do times 50 and then divided by 5,730. Okay. 
So if you started with 100 grams, all you have left is 99 point, how many decimals did I say to take this? Well, if you take it to two decimals, it's four zero. So this has a slow decay rate with that. Yeah, 5,000 years is a long time. Um, uh, a more common one, I, I'm let you finish writing this down, and then we're gonna go to the next part of this, is nuclear waste. That, that has a slow decay rate as well. And so what do you do with something that's going to take thousands of years to decay to something safe? I mean, tens of thousands of years. What do you do with it? Currently, my understanding is they store it at the nuclear reactor sites. So when they have old uranium that's been spent, they store it in these whatever. Um, that's why they wanted to push the Yucca Mountain thing. Who has heard of Yucca Mountain? Is that too long ago now? Okay. So there was a place called Yucca Mountain. It's uh, out by Vegas. It's north of Vegas, a ways. And they want to store all the, un or the spent um, uranium there. They even made one of the Terminators. Uh, that was one of the, the scenes in Terminator three, I think, they go to the Yucca Mountain. Well, wasn't there also a, a Transformers that did the Yucca Mountain? They went there to get in the, whatever. No, it was, um, let me with this. It's uh, one of those. Uh, it was a Dam. Yeah, that was, that's where Megatron is. I asked them about that when I was at Hoover Dam and they said it's on the Arizona side. Mm -hmm. um, the, it was uh, one of those Godzilla movies. That the creature needed radiation, so it went to Mount Yucca Mountain to get all the stuff stored there. So, okay. Um, if an artifact that originally contained 100 grams of carbon now contains 10 grams of carbon, how old is it? So we have this time the setup. Remember, that's going to be y equals y sub zero e to the negative kT. So it's going to be 10 equals 100 e to the negative and we have the same calculation. It's natural log of two over 5,730 times T. So there's our setup. It's the same process we saw earlier. We can divide by the 100. So one over 10 equals e to the negative natural log of two over 5,730 times t. So the, how do we bring that down? Natural log, natural log of one tenth equals this negative natural log of two over 5,270, gosh, I knew I was going to do that. 5,730 T. How many feet are in a mile? Anyone know? Yeah, 5,000. Yeah, I've been trying not to make that mistake and I just started going out of path, but I stuck through a seven in there anyway. So to get our T, we divide by the negative natural log of two over 5,730. And what is our T going to be? So it's natural log of one divided by 10, divided by parentheses, negative, I should have brought that 5730 up, but whatever. Natural log of two divided by I come up with 19034.6. They wanted the nearest hundred, so I think it's just, um, or is it, to go to the nearest year, 19,035 years.
Okay, carbon dating, fun stuff. What I don't want to do is get in the argument about dinosaurs and the age of dinosaurs, partly because I think it could be, I've heard people argue one way or the other, um, that the atmosphere for dinosaurs was different than it is now, so the decay rate would have been different. So we'll just go with how this is and move on from there. Okay, what else do we have here? We have... Would you like to see this one? I mean, we have one, I have one, two examples left. Do you want to see both of them or this is the same type of thing. We have hundred grams of carbon 14, how much left after T years? So that's like the first part. Um, and then how long will it take to get down to 20 grams instead of uh, 10 grams? But the other one I want to do, I'm looking at the time. We've got 20 or 19 minutes left. And here's one more. An unknown radioactive element decays into non-radioactive substances in 500 days. The radioactivity of the sample decreases by 71%. So this one I think is a little more challenging, which I'm surprised because usually these problems aren't as challenging, but um, 71%. And when you do this, then Think of 100% minus 71%. So it loses that much. What's left? 29%. 29%. Good. So what we're looking at is 0.29 times the amount, that's the current amount, equals the initial amount times E to the negative K times, and the time they gave us is 500 days. So that's the formula I'd set up. We don't know the initial amount, but we know there was an amount and we're at 29% of that initial amount. So you had to make that subtraction. We can divide both sides by A, 0.29 equals E to the negative 500K. Now, what do we do? Natural log of 0.29 equals the natural log of E to the negative 500 K. I didn't do that part, just whatever, I did it. So the natural log of 0.29 equals negative 500 K. So how do I get the K? Divide by the negative 500, good. So K would be, I think I left it like that. Natural log of 0.29 over negative 500. So now they wanna know how long will it take 100 milligrams to get to 87 milligrams. So again, why? equals y sub zero e to the negative kt. I did end up plugging that in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's another step to this. I forgot about this. So this is our k. And time equals oh, we wanted to find the half life. The natural log of two, this is the time for the half life over the K. So it's natural log of two over the natural log of 0.29 over negative 500. This gives us the half life. And from this calculation, I got. 279.97, I think this is in days. Yeah. I also 
We ran the numbers for K to get a decimal. K would be approximately, let's verify my numbers here. The natural log of 0.29 divided by negative 500. And I have negative 0 0.002475. So if you use this number in the last part, and we know we have 87 is the amount that we have, equals 100 is the amount we did have, E to the, and I, I'm sorry, this came out to be positive K, but it's E to the negative K for decay. So negative 0 0.0024757 times T, we can calculate how much as, um, how much time has passed. Okay, so what do we do? Divide by the natural log. I divide by the 100 first. Oh yeah, the 100. So 0.87 equals e to the negative 0 0.0024757t. And now it's not divided by natural log, it's taking the natural log. Oh yeah. Natural log of 0.87 equals the natural log of E to the negative point zero zero two four seven five seven T. That cancels. We use a natural log of 0 0.87 equals negative point zero zero two four seven five seven T. And then we can divide by that coefficient. And what's our T gonna be? Um, I have, because of my round off, I have 56.25. I would trust your numbers because you probably carried the number through better than I did. But there we go. Okay, exponential decay.